Welcome to the Pyramid Insider, friends. My name is Tyler Patner, and today we have the brand new Air Venturi Avengex here in the Woodstock 22 caliber. Let's dive in. The Avengex was launched at SHOT Show 2023 to a lot of fanfare. Uh, Air Venturi's new flagship, obviously building on the success of their Avenger, kind of why it shares some of the name. Uh, but you have a lot of different options with this gun because it's built as a modular platform. You can change the stock styles. You have this wood stock option. You have a synthetic stock option. You have a tactical stock setup and a bullpup configuration right now. Uh, but you can change them at will, kind of do what you want with it. Caliber interchangeability, air source interchangeability. You have the tube option you see here, you got a bottle option. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on with this gun. Uh, let's dive into the details here. So starting off at the front of the gun, we do have a threaded cap here. There are half 20 threads underneath here. YouTube doesn't like us taking on and putting on stuff, so we'll just leave that on there for now. But there is an integrated baffle stack uh, that does capture the end of the barrel, so it helps to center it, keep everything in line in there. And of course, you have a fully shrouded barrel. It's a 22.8 inch barrel on here, and that is the same in 177, 22, and 25. Of course, a uh, cool thing about the barrel kit setup is the barrel kits are gonna come with everything you need. So if you do buy the gun and you wanna change calibers later, you buy the barrel kit, it is a fully shrouded barrel setup. So you just swap that over, you swap over the bolt probe and it even comes with a magazine as well. So pretty much everything you're gonna need to get shooting in that new caliber right away. Now dropping down underneath of our barrel shroud here, we have a 210 cc air cylinder. And this has a quick disconnect fill fitting on the end here. It's under this knurled cap, uh, but you have the same fill system on the bottle version as well, which is almost double the air capacity. But still the 210 cc air cylinder is going to give you plenty of shots. We'll put it out on the range uh, and see exactly what it does at its current tune. And that kind of works into the next part of this. So uh, of course this is the wood stock version, but you do have other stock versions as well, uh, but the gun's still fully adjustable for power. So you have your regulator adjustment on the underside of the stock there. You have your hammer spring adjustment at the back of the action, and you also have an integrated transfer port adjustment. And that's really your quick change power there. You have two settings, a high and a low power setting, uh, and that's gonna make going up and down really, really fast, really easy without having to deal with all of the tuning elements. But you have those three mechanisms for changing power, which are going to obviously influence your shot count. Uh, so that is something we will test, but we'll test it kind of as it's set up right now because it's shooting quite well. But when we get out in the range, we'll talk more about that. So on the tube versions of the gun, the barrel band is going to have two O-rings inside of it. The reason I bring this up, if you want to free float your barrel, you can remove the O-ring from the barrel band here, and that is going to free float it. You can actually do the same thing with the air cylinder side if you wanted to. Uh, you certainly don't have to. It's shooting just fine as is, but again, your mileage may vary. You might want to play with some of that stuff on your own. Uh, you do have a full metal Picatinny rail that we've mounted this bipod to, and what you'll notice is there's a big through hole here, and that's because your stock is actually connected to that barrel band, not the rail itself. Uh, so mounting a bipod, shooting from a bipod shouldn't influence your point of impact or anything like that. Now dropping back on the gun to the breech here, we do have two color-coded gauges. So your red gauge, it says fill pressure on it. Uh, the gun fills to 4350 PSI and both the tube and the bottle do fill to that pressure. And then of course on the left hand side of the action we have our blue gauge which is regulator pressure and that's going to constantly display what the regulator pressure is set at of course as long as your fill pressure is above it so something to keep in mind if you're new to adjustable regulated guns you, that you will want to make sure your fill pressure is higher than your reg pressure uh, but even when you're making adjustments you'll be able to see that when you do it on the gauge it, that needle will adjust as you uh, increase pressure again increasing pressure is totally okay uh, under pressure, so meaning when there's air in the cylinder, you can bump the reg up in pressure, but if you wanna go down, you do need to degas the gun, and you do that by way of this screw right here in the left-hand side of the action. Uh, simple Allen key, very easy, you pop it loose and vent the air, and then you can make your adjustments downward, refill the gun, and get it set how you want it. One thing I should note there as well, the gun does come with all the Allen keys in terms of the sizes that you're gonna need to work on it, remove stocks, uh, degas it, change barrels, all of that stuff is included. So good to know. It also comes with some extra seals um, in addition to some other bits we'll get to in a minute. But this breech is all one piece. So solid aluminum breech, no more plastic, 
cover with the metal scope rails, nothing like that. This is one solid piece Picatinny rail only for mounting your optics. So keep that in mind. This does not have that dual rail. So pick mounts are what you're going to want to get or weaver mounts, of course. Uh, and then sliding back, you will notice this, this cutout with the AV logo on the left-hand side. And what that is, is actually uh, a cover plate for your side lever. You can swap the lever from the right hand to the left hand side. If you're a lefty or if you're a righty that prefers to run on a bipod and you wanna have that lever on the left hand side to make it a little bit easier for you to run off the bench. You can set it up however you want. That's the entire point of this gun. It's up to you. Your air gun, your way, however you want it. We did touch on that transfer port adjustment. One thing that I wanted to bring up about the capabilities of the gun. Uh, on the high side, your power is, uh, I believe in 22, right around 50 foot pounds max is what it's rated for. But what the transfer port adjustment allows you to do is choke off the transfer port inside of the barrel and actually get those low power tunes that the Avenger does not do very well, uh, which will increase your shot count uh, a lot. So something you can play with if you're shooting in the winter indoors or something like that, or you're doing pesting in a barn, you don't want to over penetrate an animal, things like that. Uh, that is going to be a really good tool for you to get those low power tunes dialed in. Side lever action is quite smooth on the gun, very easy to pull back. Uh, you do have a bolt here that goes through the linkage uh, that you might want to keep an eye on from time to time. Just make sure it's nice and snug, just something to keep an eye on. Uh, your safety located on the right hand side, that hunter style safety. You got that red dot there, it's hot, ready to go, ready to fire. You flip it back and you are on safe. With the breech open though, let's talk about what the gun comes with magazine wise and single shot tray. So you do have a single shot tray that's gonna be included with every gun, uh, not included with the caliber change kits. With those caliber change kits, you're gonna get a standard capacity magazine. This is the same mag you have for the Avenger. Uh, this is a 10 round mag in 177 and 22 and an eight round mag in 25. Uh, but this is nice, compact, easy to use, and they're really in affordable, inexpensive, but the gun does also come with this new high capacity magazine. So this is a 16 round mag in 22. In 177, it's 20 rounds. In 25 caliber, it's 13 rounds. So a huge upgrade in terms of that mag capacity, but you will need to take into account where your scope's mounted and how high your scope is mounted in order to use this. And that's why they included both there. Uh, so you have that option if you wanna go with a lower scope mount setup, uh, it's still able to use that mag without issue or run it in single shot. Decocking the gun, very simple. You go ahead, you flip that to hot, you hold that bolt back and pull the trigger. Really easy to do, no issues there, very standard procedure. Dropping down to the trigger, the trigger pack itself is a much beefier setup than what we saw on the Avenger. You do also have some more sear engagement adjustment here. Uh, one thing to note for those of you that are looking to really fine tune that sear engagement, there are some washers on the adjustment screw that will prohibit you from going too far, meaning uh, prohibit you from making the gun unsafe or uh, unable to cock the action and actually get that sear to set on the hammer. Um, in those instances, you can remove those washers to fine tune it, but, but just know that you can run it in too far. So something to play with for those of you guys that are looking to adjust that trigger, those fine uh, little increments there, uh, you can do that with this trigger, something you couldn't really do with the Avenger. Now the wood stock on this gun looks really, really nice. Uh, the ones we saw at SHOT Show were a lighter stain. Looks like they've darkened that up. Uh, it looks like just beach, but uh, really nice setup overall. Adds some nice weight, good feel to this. Um, you have a dual raised cheek piece on this gun. It is not adjustable. The synthetic stock, uh, classic stock, does have an adjustable cheek piece if that's what you're after. Actually, the bullpup does as well. And of course, the tactical has an AR adjusting stock. Uh, but you have a rubber butt pad at the back. You have a swivel stock. Uh, at the rear as well as a sling point mount at the front on the back of the metal rail. Um, that's really the gun in a nutshell here. The important part though is what it does over the chronograph and downrange in terms of accuracy. So let's head out to the range and see how the Avengex performs.
All right, so it's taking the Avengex straight out to 45 yards, tested pretty much everything we have on hand as far as pellets go. We didn't do slugs. The gun's not set up right now for slugs. In a future video, we'll tune one up nice and hot and shoot some slugs through it and see what it does. Uh, but with pellets, it shot a ton of stuff well. Um, what you're about to see are only really the best three, I guess. It did shoot a bunch of other pellets right around the one inch mark, um, but these are the best three. So starting off first, we've got the uh, JTS 18 grain pellets, those dead centers, uh, right at 0.95, so under an inch there for 10 rounds. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I was able to use both of the magazines here because of the way I have the scope position. Uh, we could actually get, you know, load this up with just 10 rounds and fit the big mag in there, which is nice. Makes things a little faster on my end. But uh, another thing to note about these JTS is they are a little hard to load in, especially compared to the JSBs. The JSBs are like butter smooth. Those JTSs have just a little bit of difficulty before you close that bolt up. Uh, one of our surprises, the Umarex Brimstone pellets. Uh, these are a little bit heavier, but 10 shots, 0.85. So pretty solid grouping there. That's going to be minute a squirrel's head every time. Uh, but certainly by far the best JSB 1813 Jumbo Heavies, 0.65, all 10. That's a beautiful group. Exactly what we've come to expect out of like Avengers. So really, why should the Avengex be any different? Uh, we'll run through the rest of our testing now. Trigger, sound, all of that stuff. Put it over the chronograph at its current tune and see what it's doing. And depending on the results we get, maybe retune it, but let's get it over the chronograph first and see what happens. So right out of the box, the Avengex 22 cal numbers here don't look too bad. The reg's at 2,000 PSI, three and a half turns in on the hammer spring, which is probably a little hot. We're coming in at an average velocity of 917 feet per second, over 58 shots, which is just under 34 foot-pounds of energy, but our extreme spread's pretty high, 31 feet per second. Uh, standard deviation looks okay. We had a lot of duplicates in there, but again, we're a little hot. What I'd like to see is the gun more closer to 880, 890 or so versus that 917. And you'll notice that the entire string kind of descends as we go. And then once we fall off the reg, the velocity spike back up a bit. That usually indicates that our regulator and hammer spring settings are out of alignment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna retune the gun, hopefully drop that reg pressure down a little bit uh, and then bring that hammer spring all the way out and then kind of retune things. And we'll show you that here in just a second. So we're gonna retune the Avengex, kind of give it a pro tune so we can lose some of that descending shot string that we saw. Uh, to do that, we're gonna drop the reg pressure a bit. Now, when you raise the reg pressure up, if we were gonna power tune it, let's say, you could just make that adjustment without degassing the gun. But since we're gonna go lower on that regulator, we do need to degas it. So you're gonna need a three millimeter Allen key to do so. Uh, it comes with the gun. It comes with every size you're gonna need to work on it from an Allen key standpoint. So let's go ahead and degas. Right into that side and... Now, before we retighten, I want to check both gauges. So in this case, our fill pressure gauge is at zero, which is what it's supposed to be. But it does look like our reg gauge, our regulator, our plenum is holding a little bit of pressure. So you're going to want to go ahead and dry fire the gun in a safe direction to clear that air. There you go. And now we're at zero. So now that our gun's empty, let's go ahead and retighten the bleed screw down just so we don't forget it later. Remember righty tighty lefty loosey folks. And then we will flip the gun over to expose our reg adjustment screw. Now that is a flathead screwdriver. We'll just go ahead and take that. And you wanna go clockwise until it stops. And that's dead stop. Now what the manual says is that you wanna come back about a quarter of a turn. Uh, a quarter is a lot. I'm gonna just bump it a little bit just to see where it opens up and then we'll work it up from there. All right, so now that we've made that adjustment pretty much all the way down on that reg, we will go ahead and fill the gun up. You don't need to fill it all the way up to 4350 to do this, just over what your intended reg pressure is. So we'll try and get it to about 3000 PSI. That'll give us more than enough room. 
All right, so we've aired the gun up. We'll put the cap back on. And you can see our reg is sitting uh, right at about 1500 PSI or so. Now that's probably a little lower than we want, but that's okay. We're, we're gonna shoot for about 1800. Uh, and of course we've got over 3000 PSI and it probably about 3300 or so. Um, now to go ahead and bump that adjustment up, let's flip the gun back over. So now we're gonna take our flathead screwdriver and we're gonna begin to open the reg up, build a little bit more pressure there um, by adjusting counterclockwise. Now you guys are gonna be focused on that reg gauge right there. Uh, I am also going to be focused on that. So we're gonna go little by little and see if we can get that like right to 1800. All right, just gently open her up. See that needle coming up? I wanna get to about that third mark there. Right about there. All right, so we should be, yep, right about 1800. I'm gonna dry fire this a few times just to make sure it settles in that area, but then we'll head up, back out to the range, put it over the chronograph, start messing with that hammer spring adjustment until we find our balance point, right? Hopefully about 880, 890 feet per second. All right, so we've got our JSB 1813s out here and uh, the reg settled right nicely, just as we thought, right at about 1800, 1750 or so. Um, now we're gonna adjust the hammer spring. Now to fine tune the hammer spring, we're really looking for the velocity now. So we've got our reg pressure down into the range where we needed it based off our previous chronograph string but that was with three and a half turns in on that hammer spring. So now we wanna kind of run the hammer spring, hopefully a little bit lighter, maybe one, one and a half turns, but we need to start and see where we're at. So let's take a first shot here. All right, so 827. 830. Okay, so right around 830 feet per second. So we're about 50 FPS off of where we wanna be. So Allen key, two and a half mil in the back. So I'm gonna give it one full turn. So there's a half and one. All right, let's see where we're at with one turn in on that hammer spring. Now, usually it might take a couple shots to settle, but that was 877, pretty much right where we wanna be. 871. and 879. I'm gonna give it just a touch more. About a quarter turn or so. There we go. Eight eighty six. Eight seventy six. still settling. 881, perfect. 881 again. All right, so now that we've got our settings, we're at about 1750 to 1800 PSI on that regulator. We've got our transfer port adjuster opened up on high, and now we've got our hammer spring in one and a quarter turns. Now I'm gonna fill it up to 300 bar, and we're gonna re-chronograph it and see if we've got our nice stable tune. Looking over our post tune numbers, remember this is a quick, easy tune. I didn't put a lot of time into this. We definitely could shrink that extreme spread if we put some more time into it, uh, but you can see immediately the numbers are a lot tighter, the extreme spread's a lot tighter, and we're getting way more shots. And that's really what the Avengex is all about. You're looking at an average of 880 feet per second, 31 foot pounds or so. Uh, this is a lot better, a lot more consistent string than what the gun came factory to at. So again, just with a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, you can get these results exactly where you want them. And really that's what the Avengex is all about, giving you the ability to tune the gun your way. All right, let's wrap up the Avengex. Uh, before we start there though, I should tell you all that I am heavily biased in this review, okay? I had a fairly heavy hand in the design uh, of the gun and some of the bells and whistles on it. So um, I am biased. I will admit that. But I hope today we've shown you that the gun certainly performs quite well uh, for in that middling like five to six hundred dollar price point for the one you see here in front of you. 
This is a lot of gun for the money with a lot of bells and whistles built in uh, that really no one else uh, that I'm aware of anyway is doing on the market in the price point. Uh, to have the caliber interchangeability, you know, to be able to swap that lever over from the right to the left, stock interchangeability, and then retaining all of those power adjustments that you guys love out of the Avenger, uh, this gun's got a lot going for it and I think you guys are gonna love it. Uh, and hopefully we've shown you that it's a solid performer. That's, uh, that's the whole point. So. Uh, uh, really pleased with the gun overall. Accuracy's great. Shot count is phenomenal, uh, at least in its 22 caliber, obviously. That tune is going to change some things a bit, uh, depending on what ammo you're running, how you want to run the gun. Uh, but all of that is at your fingertips, and that's what's so cool about the Avengex as a platform. So I hope you guys like it. Let us know. Sound off in the comments if you're going to be picking one up, if you thought the performance was as good as I think it is. Uh, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate y'all for watching. Thank you very much for the Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. We'll see you next time.